All right. Good morning, Cyber Traders. Welcome back on this lovely Wednesday. Hump day th on Wednesday. Let me tell you, Tuesday was awesome. It was an awesome, awesome day. CRIS was unbelievable yesterday. Stock was at a dollar, gapped up, went to four. Look at this thing was up almost like a gazillion percent. What a nice little mover yesterday uh, on that CRIS. We're going to talk a lot about it. <coughs> We had one really good one this morning. Also, we're going to talk about the XBIO that really moved a lot in pre-market this morning. Company got, uh, I think, got approval for uh, phase three trial. And uh, that's always big news to get that. So we'll see what happened. With, we've seen what, how that works with the vaccine. So people never realize how, like, that, that drug companies, how everything works around what they do uh with these phase two one two and three trials and um in in our classes when we teach people how to you know when we look at news you know sometimes you, you, I, i've been educating them the basics of that and i think everyone's probably starting to learn that more and more now with the virus going on and how what an impact it would have on certain drug stocks and like the uh i'll just bring it up right now and we'll look at it like a stock like this XBIO just out of nowhere just literally just took off went from a dollar to 450 it was just it was just great anyway um uh Gene you made you made about 20 cents in cruise right now in in CRIS we're going to check that one out too cruise is obviously what a great animal stock we're going to check that out but uh before we do that let me just change it so people can see on YouTube a little bit better and I uh, want to talk about some other stocks that we did trade yesterday cuz there were a couple of good ones that did make some nice moves uh, I want to start off with the LXRX trade right there. So uh, let me fix the time frame here. So it's easy to see. So that one right here, uh, that one had another nice little move, nice little gap up in the morning, went from $1.80 to about $2.40, shot up to about $4, all the way up until like 12 o'clock, had a really, really nice move. Uh, now, obviously, the party's over. You can see after 12 o'clock, things are over. Remember, like... We start comment. We stop commentary in our trading room at 10:30 for a reason. You know, if you haven't, you know, looked at and bought the Cyber Clock map, map yet, you're probably uh, a mouse pad. You probably would see it. I remember I invented this thing 25 years ago, and till today, it say till people tell me it saves them thousands, tens of thousands, because you know there's only certain times to trade, and it's not a full time job. So, you know, when it's time to take off, it's time to take off. And you could see that uh, that happens, right, with stocks like the LXR, uh, LXRX. Another stock I want to keep an eye on. What the hell is going on with U.S. Steel? Remember I told you this yesterday. If you watched our, yes, uh, our, our uh, if you were here on YouTube or Facebook, or maybe watching it on a video, but cyber traders, you know this. We're talking about the metal stocks, and I, but U.S. Steel. I mean, how do you know to be to buy U.S. Steel? I mean, where do U.S. Steel come from? Well, it all starts as a day trade. You know, we we've seen it. We saw a tick up right around following making higher highs when it was uh, back in November. It was at nine, nine fifty, ten, ten fifty. Then boom, it went from eleven to about fourteen. And it just closed at the highs of the day. When you're a good, um, not even a good investor, but if you're a good trader, great traders never buy at the bottom and we never sell at top, okay? We always buy in between. That's a good trader. If you buy at the bottom and sell at top, which sounds better than buying in between, you're a horrible trader Trader, because what that means is, number one, you got lucky, and number two, you're going to strike out more than, 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 than you make. You got to know, you got to go with the trend. Don't sit there and say, oh, look, the stock bounced. How did you know it was going to bounce there? You know what I mean? You got to see, you got to watch the money. But anyway, U.S. Steel did pretty well. Uh, F-Cell also, want to bring that up. F-Cell, uh, we've been trading this stock, has been a great, great uh, day trade also. $2 stock to 11 Stock's been doing great. So we've been doing pretty well with that one. And we had a couple of good swing trades. Um, Chewy, we're, we're all... I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm a fan of Chewy. Chewy's been doing unbelievable. I don't know what that was in pre-market. It went to $84. So um, I had Chewy. I sold it. I broke even. Then I lost money on it. You know, when, Chewy just went public not too long ago. But uh, but ever since then, now it's really starting to break out. You know, I think they really have the niche. Uh, you know, to me, they're, they're Chewy. I don't know if you have, anyone has any pets, but Chewy's basically the... Uh, 
the Amazon of shopping pet food and stuff like that. Great website. Use it all the time. And I'm like, you know what? Can't afford Amazon anymore. So, you know, Chewy, if I'm going to use it, I'm going to buy it. And it's starting to get a little expensive too, actually. But those also are doing really well. So let's go see what's going on this morning. There's a couple of stocks. Now we got the A list. We have the B list. Now we had the pre-market list. If you were in our cyber group room, I had the list up there. Some of them were great. Some of them are now moving to the B list. So, you know, and then all of a sudden we had this XBIO came from nowhere. I don't know where this thing came from. But we're going to check them out and see what's happening with some of them. And hold on a second. Let me bring this up. All right. So we got the THCB. Uh, that's on the A list. Uh, I don't know what happened. I started backing off. So anyway, this stock has been a really fun stock to trade. The chart, if you look at it on the on the long-term chart, it's not as pretty as I it looks like. Wow, this thing was like maybe a dollar went to 13. It only went from 10 to 13. All right. But the chart sure makes it look like this thing has some unbelievable volatility. Uh, but the stock right here, just be very careful. It's got very small tier sizes. Look over there on the right-hand side on the level three. You can see it. There's a lot of hundreds, a couple of thousands here that make iceberg orders. But uh, this is going to probably, if you if we, if we you did trade it and you did, you know go back to your journal, cyber traders that we gave you, that we teach you how to, how to monitor and manage your, your trades. Because I always tell you, you're going to come back to that stock. So go check it out and see how it works. But I might throw this back on the B list. ARPO made the A list. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to slap this on the B list because it's a penny stock. I, you know, I, I, you know, I don't need to go any further than that. Cruz, I like this stock a lot. It's been very volatile. It's been a lot of fun. It had some great iceberg orders. You can put this one also on A list, but you got to you can go by and see what happened as of yesterday. You could use previous support and resistance levels. But remember what we teach you here. I said it uh, yesterday. We did an event. Oh, yeah, I know. That's right. Uh, Chewy had earnings. Thank you very much for sharing that with me. Thank you. Chewy had earnings yesterday. I forgot about that. How did I not know that when you own the stock? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, it had it had a great. I mean, the thing popped uh, in earnings at after hours. But it looks like a pony kind of just closed but right where, where it was. But that was, damn, hope it goes back up there. Earnings. Remember, I always told you about earnings. Companies go out of business every three months. And people, even if the company's been in business for 20 years, 50 years, because they they have they have a, a responsibility to report if they're making money or not. You, you know, um, I was teaching, you know, my son, he's like, Dad, you teach me how to trade. You know, I'm always teaching, you know, little kids, our 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 younger generation. They all want to know how they can benefit. And I talked about this yesterday. You know, anything I could do charity work or educate people, you know, if it's prison reform, you know, uh, that I did the other day, like educate people about the market. Um, they have to understand the function and the, and the basis of what they're buying. And they just say, no, no I just want to make money. And, you know, that's why, like I, like, I get so upset when I see people watching these YouTube videos and they go out there and everyone's bragging how much money they make in this and that. And you know what? They have no idea why they even made money on the stock other than they make money and the people are like well why what's the big deal it has a lot to do with it because some of you here you know had trade let's say futures options whatever and you're like how many of you guys really made money doing it and uh, you know many people i talked to says oh yeah i blew up my account well why did you trade in the first place if you knew the if you knew the purpose of what that market how it actually works then you would understand you know I, like i put the fear in god in somebody before i even even trade a stock you know, and you should have the fear in God in you because you can blow up your account. You got to know exactly what you get yourself involved in. And I'm actually going to do a webinar on that, too, to kind of uh, teach everyone that. But anyway, getting back to my, my the younger generation, they go out there and they just don't understand what, what, what the stock does. Um, and you have to teach them the basics to understand why they do what they do. And it all starts with those earnings announcements, because that, if that company doesn't meet their earnings, boom, it's a done stock. All right. Actually, earnings, I think, has a lot more to do than news on a company. Now, because the news starts it, but at the end of the day, did they make money from that news? Anyway, let's go back on the B list. Sorry about my going my chant. I go off uh, on my little rants here and there. But I think it's very important that we always kind of educate everyone early in the morning.
Now the uh, XBO IO, this is the company that came out with the with the uh, earnings and uh, phase three trial approval. If you notice, it hasn't really moved. It hasn't really moved. Um, I'm watching it pretty closely here on my level four. Now, for some of you, um, if you watched Bookmap yesterday, uh, whoever has a, an account with them, I did an event on it. You actually can watch my vi video. And by the way, it was really a good, I, I really went over and beyond to educate people a little bit about it. Uh, and I got really basic on it. But um, you can see there's, been, there's a big seller out there and he's really having a tough time busting through that 440, 460 price range. So, you know, and, and that level four is like God to me. But you could see now that the, there's a lot more sellers than buyers if you look on the red versus the blue on the level three. But I'm going to keep an eye on that one too because apparently that news is pretty big. Another penny stock, another stock I'm a little, a little cautious about. It's up 83%. Listen, penny stock, $7. Is that even possible? Yes. Okay. Then I get people like, oh, I don't deal with penny stocks when it's a $3 stock. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? It's ain't penny stocks. I mean, these are, you could trade a, a $12, a $50 stock. I even think, um, what's it called? Nintendo, Nintendo, the video game that trades on the penny stock. So you got to be very careful of that. So we got that one, RCON. Okay. I'm going to keep an eye on that one. Once again, that's on the, you know, that's going on the B list. F-R-A-N, Fran. Fran, I don't know what happened to this thing. So you just took off out of nowhere, went from 250 to 650, and it's starting to back off. It's starting to make it, it started making lower lows. Got a little, you know, but it's holding pretty strong here, right around the 350 price range. There's a couple of big orders out there. You can see there's a 29, 2900 share sell buyer, but it doesn't have very big tier size. So be very, very careful of Fran. CIDM is another one we're going to keep on the watch list. But damn it, you know what? What's with all these penny stocks? I'm going to scratch these damn things out. I, 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 there's too many of them. There's too many of them. The other big thing I want to talk about is airlines. What did I tell you? What's going on airline? I don't know what's going on with these airlines, but I mean, they had these really big jumps yesterday. Uh, American Airlines obviously was a lot of fun to trade yesterday. Let me bring this up right here. But it had a big pop. Moved up pretty nicely. All airlines are moving. I mean, Delta is back to forty-two dollars. That's actually where I sold it. I had, I, I had, I bought, um, I bought Delta for one reason and one reason only, and that was during the crash. Uh, before, before, once the crash was actually happening, Warren Buffett bought it. Okay, Warren Buffett bought it, and yes, he did take a loss on it. He bought it. Um, he bought it at like forty-four. And then I bought it at 42, wasn't really going anywhere. And then it started going down. And then he made an announcement. It's so funny when he tells you later, like three, four days later, that he sold it. Uh, he got out of it. I ended up selling it at like 37. And um, I took a loss on it. And obviously, it went all the way down to the 20s. But uh, but now the airline started to go back. It's right back to a very, very big sweet spot right there, 42. Got to break that 42 resistance levels. But But all the airlines are doing just great. You know, and I told you, I've been a fan of it, you know, for a long time, but this is not more of a day trade. There's more of a swing trade, but how do we know it's been a good swing trade? We've been watching over the course of the day. All right. Uh, I'm in jets now looking like a buying fossil fuels oils. Yeah. Jets is obviously doing pretty well too. You could see that definitely uh, Jerry. That's a pretty good, a, a pretty good call right there. Yeah. I could definitely see that. All right. Um, anything we're missing. I did not call out guys. I want to get you guys get ready. Got the market opening up soon. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Jahal, on uh, on YouTube. Uh, DoorDash is going public today. So uh, you can see it's the date is not coming up. It's not open yet. Usually they open up around like 10, 30, 11, whatever it is. Uh, I'm just going to tell you point blank. Do not trade the IPOs, okay? You have to be extremely um, lucky to get it. And you got to be extremely, have some uh, deep pockets. Uh, they are very volatile. I don't even trade IPOs, okay? I let the smoke clear, let everybody do what they got to do, let everything happen. But um, but IPOs, you know, just try to stay away from them. I, it's definitely, you know, an exciting IPO that's coming out. Uh, everybody knows DoorDash and everything else. And hey, if you don't believe me, look what happened to Lyft. 
Look what happened to the bit one of the biggest IPOs uh, that when it came out. Look at uh, Uber. Okay, look what happened to those. You let the smoke clear and then let everybody know what's going on and then we'll worry about it. Believe me, there are other stocks that do a lot better than some of these. But I'm going to watch it. I want to see what happens. It's going to be great. It's great for the market. It's great for the industry. And it's great for the company to be public. That's great to hear. All right. All right, guys. Listen, good luck today. Um, get, let's get ready to trade and keep an eye close eye on this IBIX. Uh, before we go, just want to basically just remind everybody, tomorrow we got the big event that's coming on. If you have not registered yet, um, I'm going to post the link up on the website, uh, on our chat room. But tomorrow is our Cyber Expo. We got three great speakers. Uh, we got we, we got the day trader, which is me. You got the you know, futures and options, Hubert Sanders. And you got uh, Melissa Armour for, uh, talk a lot more sw swing trade and so on. Three big speakers. All you really need. Don't miss it. If you haven't registered, uh, please go there. Listen, great traders never stop learning. Okay. Um, that's the key about being very good in, in trading. And you know what? Great traders surround themselves with great traders, which is another very important thing you got to look at. Uh, so, guys, good luck today. Happy trading. Be safe. And uh, we'll see you back here at 2.30.